passenger has died on the train. Hercule Poirot, the best detective in the world, decides to travel on the Orient Express. The train accidentally gets stopped because of a small avalanche. Little did he know that a murder was planned, and that a person on this train was capable of committing such crime. This is the movie recap of Murder on the Orient Express, and you watching Movie Mesh. The movie begins in Jerusalem, at the Wailing Wall, in the 1930s. Famed Belgian detective, Hercule Poirot, is shown to be fussy, bordering on OCD about everything in his life being balanced, as displayed, when he sends back two eggs he'd planned to eat, because they were different sizes. I blame the chicken. It is the imbalance. Poirot attempts to work out who was behind the theft of a religious relic from a room where a priest, a rabbi, and an imam were conducting a meeting under the supervision of the chief of police. He works out from a single crack left on the wall that the culprit was actually the chief of police, as the religious figures, leading modest lives, had no reason to steal the relic and wore soft shoes unlike the chief. Police chief tries to make a run for it, but fails. With the culprit caught and the relic recovered, Poirot looks forward to his upcoming holiday and taking a break from detective work. Poirot catches a boat from Istanbul, where he makes the acquaintance of a governess, Mary Debenham, while also aboard is a young black doctor named Arbuthnot. When he gets there, he encounters his friend Book, who is now the director of the famous Orient Express. However, just after the two get reacquainted, a telegram arrives for Poirot from London. A case demands his immediate attention. Poirot is unhappy that his long-awaited break is being interrupted, but Book offers to take him to France on the Orient Express. The trip will be three days long, and Poirot settles for at least having that long to relax. Reaching the train, Book is surprised to learn that all the compartments have been booked, which is an uncommon occurrence. However one of the passengers has failed to show on time, so his ticket is forfeit. Also aboard are a myriad of other characters as well as Debenham and Arbuthnot. There is an unpleasant American by the name of Samuel Ratchel, his valet Edward Masterman, and secretary Hector McQueen. Dogs on the table. The Austrian professor Gerhard Hardman. American socialite Mrs. Hubbard. Italian car salesman Beniamino Marquez. The elderly princess Dragomirov and her assistant Hildegard Schmidt. Unhappy missionary, Pilar Estravados. And finally the Count and Countess Andrenii. The first night and day pass without incident, although Poirot is put out at having to share his room with McQueen. <laughs> the next evening, Ratchet approaches Poirot, and requests that he serve as his bodyguard for the duration of the trip, as he has been receiving threatening letters, and assumes they're from his former clients to whom he sold forged paintings. Poirot, who took an immediate dislike to Ratchet, refuses on the basis he seeks out criminals and won't help them. Ratchet offers increasing amounts of money, and even indirectly threatens Poirot with a gun, but Poirot won't be bought or intimidated and leaves in disgust. That night, Poirot, who was moved to Book's cabin, looks forward to a good night's sleep but finds it in short supply. First there is a noise, seeming to come from the compartment next to his, ratchets. But when the conductor who goes by the name of Pierre Michel, inquires as to it, a voice responds that everything is fine. Poirot is also woken up by a bell and a knock. And during the disturbances, he spots a figure in a red kimono running down the hallway. Meanwhile, there is an avalanche which stops the train in its tracks, leaving everyone stranded on the line. Poirot is thrown from his bed, where he spies Marquez, picking up spilled photos. Did we die? Since the express was expected to arrive at their next station the following day, everyone will need to wait for a rescue team to be sent. In the morning, Poirot finds out that Ratchet has been murdered in his bed during the night, having been stabbed numerous times in a classic locked door mystery. Book asks Poirot to investigate the case. However, Poirot initially refuses, he was supposed to be on holiday after all. Book implores him to look into the murder, as the Yugoslav police will likely look for a scapegoat, and may target Marquez or Arbuthnot. Faced with this, an exasperated Poirot agrees. After confirming that no one left or entered the carriage during the night, and that no one is on the train that shouldn't be, Poirot knows that any of the other passengers or conductor could be the murderer. He takes Book as his assistant, as Book was sleeping in another carriage, he couldn't be the murderer. An investigation of the body shows that Ratchet was stabbed 12 times. However the wounds are not consistent, 
while some are certainly lethal, others are shallow. This implies that the murderer was drunk, but Ratchet was of good physical built, armed and already wary, so it's very unlikely he was overpowered. Investigating his room, they find the threatening letters, as well as a partially destroyed note, connecting Ratchet to the case of Daisy Armstrong. Poirot remembers the case. Daisy Armstrong was a little girl, who was kidnapped and then murdered, despite the family paying the ransom, which caused her mother Sonia to go into premature labor, killing both her and her unborn child, with Daisy's father committing suicide soon after. Daisy's murderer was a man called Lanfranco Cassetti, who got away with the crime, and Poirot and Book soon discover from the evidence, that Ratchet was Cassetti, and whoever killed him, likely had a connection with that case. Some more evidence is found. A blood-stained handkerchief with the initial H, and the button from a conductor's uniform is found, in Mrs. Hubbard's room, she had previously been claiming someone was in her room. An investigation of Michelle's uniform shows all the buttons to be present, so an investigation of everyone's luggage is conducted, except for the Count and Countess as they have diplomatic immunity. The uniform doesn't show up, and Poirot deduces the culprit is trying to outsmart him, when the kimono he spotted the previous night is found in his suitcase. Mrs. Hubbard is later stabbed in the back, but the wound is very minor, and she cannot identify who did it. The uniform with the missing button is later found on an overhead rack, leaving that lead at a dead end. A rescue team arrives and start freeing the Orient Express from the snow. Poirot and Book speak to McQueen, and find he had a motive for the murder as he had been skimming money off Cassetti's accounts. They also find a connection to the Daisy Armstrong case. McQueen's father had attempted to prosecute Armstrong's nursemaid, causing her to commit suicide, with his career being destroyed when the truth was known. As his interviews and investigations proceed, Poirot finds that many of the passengers had a connection to the Daisy Armstrong. Princess Dragomirov was Sonia Armstrong's godmother, and friend to her mother Linda Arden. Schmidt was the Armstrong's cook. Arbuthnot was in the army with Daisy's father. Marquez was the family's chauffeur. Pilar was Daisy's nursemaid and had fallen asleep when the girl was abducted, Debenham was Daisy's governess. And Masterman was butler to the Armstrong family. The biggest connection, however, is the Countess Andrenii. She is Helena Goldenberg, Daisy's aunt. Despite all this, Poirot finds himself unable to narrow down who committed the act. While questioning Debenham about the murder, he is confronted by Arbuthnot, who is also implied to be Debenham's secret lover, who claims responsibility for the murder. He attempts to shoot Poirot but misses and then flees. Poirot realizes that Arbuthnot never meant to kill him, Arbuthnot was a sharpshooter in the army and would never have missed his shot at such close range, and demands that all the suspects be assembled which they quickly are, in the tunnel, for some reason. Poirot reveals that there are two possible solutions to the murder, and the first is simple yet unlikely. Cassetti was murdered by one of the many enemies he acquired over the years as Ratchet, who got aboard the train and then fled after the murder. The second is outlandish, but fits the facts better. Everyone bored was involved in the murder. Poirot has found even more connections to the Daisy Armstrong case. Gerhard Hardman is actually an American detective called Cyrus, who was in love with the nurse, falsely accused, who turns out to have been Michelle's sister. While Mrs. Hubbard is Linda Arden. He has reasoned that, so that no one person would have been responsible. All of the suspects entered Cassetti's room and stabbed him in turn as a form of execution, no one knows exactly who killed him. Arden admits she was responsible for bringing everyone together, determined to make Cassetti pay for what he did to her daughter and granddaughter. It was my plan! Poirot tells Arden that now he is the only person who can expose their plot and challenges someone to shoot him, leaving his gun on the table. Arden picks it up but instead attempts to shoot herself, but the gun isn't loaded, as Poirot just wanted to see what she would do. He watches as Arden collapses into tears. The train is unearthed and continues on its way. Poirot decides that there is no justice to be found in this case. Everyone aboard has already suffered greatly from Cassetti's crime, while Cassetti himself was an evil man, who had gotten away with murder and deserved what happened to him. He notes that this is one imbalance of letting twelve people get away with murder that he will have to live with. When the train reaches the station, Poirot tells the police that his first theory is correct. The murderer was an enemy of Ratchet who has fled. The police believe him, and the passengers continue on their way. Poirot decides to disembark the train at this point, eager to finally get some rest. Once again, however, his reputation has preceded him, 
and he is approached by a messenger as he is needed in Egypt due to a death on the Nile. Although tired, Poirot decides to take the case, stopping for a moment to see the Orient Express disappear into the distance. If you like this video kindly subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.